I am as confused as uh, apparently Javi Martinez looks. I think this is going to be one of these training sessions that the coaches enjoy a lot more than the players. We've yet to even see a ball today. So one uh, uh, Martinez and Robin, I'm not sure if they really understood the point here. Basically, one of the players takes the lead here. The other one tries to follow. And then when one of them sprints to whichever direction he chooses, the other one was supposed to try and catch him, uh, touch him, that is. Olga Boy said, please, no uh, flying tackles. But it's about reaction time. You'll see this again. Player on the right, I think. Is it the player on the right? The player on the left basically decides where to go to. Then he sprints into one direction. The other one has to catch him. Yeah, this is... Uh, Again, all good, strengthens the muscles, thigh muscles, helps uh, the players remain or even improve in terms of being explosive. But I think Holger Boy's uh, little time to play here is over, it seems. Trying to hear what Peter Hammond is uh, trying to explain here, but I suppose we'll see it in a minute anyway. What's interesting is that the exercises have become a little more complicated again, as they were under your Pankas already and then under Pep Guardiola. Angelotti liked uh, to keep it simple, liked to train the basics, passing, uh, for instance, but here we always have different elements uh, in one. Exercise, lots of movement. Your Pankas always says, if you want the players to do something well during games on the pitch, it has to have happened already. They need to know what to do in specific situations because they've practiced these situations again and again and again. That's how he trains. I suppose that's the Pep Guardiola's approach as well. Ancelotti was more about the basics and more about... Uh, giving the players the responsibility uh, on the pitch uh, themselves. Heinkes has commented on uh, slight muscle injuries and muscle problems that players have had. He says it's completely normal. Uh, again, we have increased the intensity of training, the amount of uh, training. Uh, there's been a lot of games, a lot of traveling as well. Uh, seven games, I mentioned it in the last three weeks, four of which were away uh, from home 
and uh, in Glasgow the players were gone a couple of days in Dortmund two nights uh, away from home and Heike says it all plays a role different uh, hotels different hotel beds away from the family traveling even if uh, the trips of course weren't that long it all plays a role uh, which is why uh, Heinkes is also as he says a coach who doesn't want to, to take any risks whatsoever with uh, his players he was asked uh, on Friday I believe it was if Franck Ribéry would possibly return in December already and he says one way or the other I'm not taking any risks um, and with Franck Ribéry not uh, particularly not Peter Hamann if you're not aware of who is in your Heinkes coaching staff this is the man you need to know about your Heinkes I think it's safe to say insisted on Peter Hamann uh, joining him at uh, uh, Munich I wonder uh, well, although I think it's actually pretty clear I think your Heinkes would not have joined Bayern Munich without Peter Hamann he says he needs him this is his uh, training uh, guru this is the guy who does the gets his hands dirty who does the day-to-day -day work the groundwork basically whereas Heinkes is the coach who observes who has the strategy the philosophy the tactical uh, guidelines for the players Hamann does the nitty-gritty work and uh, he is important for Job Heinkes uh, Bayern Munich had to pay a, a transfer sum for Hamann Gallan who was um, employed with Fortuna Dusseldorf as the assistant manager of Friedhelm Funkel and was very successful there as well, taking Dusseldorf uh, to top spot in the second division at the time. And uh, this is also very different. I noticed that immediately, and I think it's something that the Bayern officials enjoy here, there's a lot of talking again, a lot of encouragement. Peter Hammond is a guy who uh, specifically addresses players, talks to them and says, good job, Arian, bad job, Arian, Rafinha, move faster, whatever it is. Again, quite different to what Bayern Munich experienced under Ancelotti, but also under Pep Guardiola. Don't get uh, this wrong. This isn't criticism. But of course, when you have coaching staffs consisting only of uh, non-German speakers, at least it seemed as if uh, the communication was below par, or left room for improvement. It was uh, immediately very conspicuous here in these first couple of trading sessions. The criticism and the encouragement coming from the coaching staff is just on a bit of a new level. Again, you can see here these passing exercises, one touch football and uh, with a couple of obstacles uh, in the way as well all of this is what Heinkes wants to see and again Peter Hamann calling in good job bad job you did well or not so well Javi Martinez again, as I said, key player in your Heinkes system. Heinkes was quick to say uh, that his predecessors were right in using Martinez in central defense because he's certainly capable of playing that. He said, I just have a different opinion. First of all, I thought it was interesting. He said on an absolute top level, Martinez is too slow uh, in Heinkes opinion to play center back. Here's Tony Tapalovic in the center training with Sven Ulreich and Tom Starke. Let's talk about Sven Ulreich for a minute. Then fantastic saves against Dortmund. And I think it really showed while there was always a bit of criticism of, of Sven Ulreich's performances in recent years. Because when he performed for Bayern Munich, he played a game or two and just didn't look as secure as Manuel Neuer usually does. Now, that isn't much of a surprise. We're talking about the backup goalkeeper to the best goalkeeper in the world. But... I think now that Sven Ulreich has had plenty of time to settle in, now that he realizes, and that's most important, and Jupp Heinke has actually commented on that as well, now that Sven Ulreich knows he's in 
He's gonna play, he's gonna keep playing, regardless if he makes a mistake or not, because Sven Ulreich is now the backup guy in the absence of Manuel Neuer. And now that he feels that trust, now that he feels that confidence that uh, no matter if he shows a mistake, that doesn't mean that he's not gonna play the next game. Now he's playing better, now he's really showing absolute top performances. And I think some uh, performances that at least some experts and some fans too find surprising. We've of course been fortunate enough to always see him perform here uh, at Bayern Munich. Everyone here knows how good Sven Ulreich is. Again, sometimes the performance is dwarfed by what Manuel Neuer shows, but in recent weeks, I have to honestly say Sven Ulreich, a very, very impressive stronghold at the back for Bayern Munich. There he is again. And personally, I have to say quite happy for him. Really, really, nice uh, friendly guy as is Tom Starker and as is Manuel Neuer too uh, by the way really a uh, good group of guys I'm sure Tony Tapalovic and I know uh, Tony Tapalovic loves working uh, with these guys because they're good they're willing to learn even Tom Starker at that uh, age didn't hesitate you know as a Bayern fan I'm sure he shouldn't even be here Tom Starker basically quit professional football in uh, summer to become uh, somewhat of a goal coach a goal keeping mentor a a coach and a manager for Bayern Munich's goalkeepers throughout the youth teams but when Manuel Neuer sustained injury Starker was quick to agree on a return he had stayed fit anyway and is now the backup to Sven Ulreich I remember a couple of weeks ago, we were talking to a couple of uh, colleagues from uh, different newspapers and some actually suggested Tom Starker should go back in goal. This was after a mistake or two uh, by Sven Ulreich. Starker is also a very, very reliable uh, second uh, goalkeeper. Again, as you can hear, Peter Hamann constantly talking constantly telling the players what's good what's bad what if he expects a sharper pass if the pass was too much Hamann Peter Hamann that is and Job Heinkes have said uh, what a uh, joy it is or what satisfaction it gives them to work with the players again because they just uh, listen so well and they've accepted uh, and been prepared to welcome uh, the coaches back. Okay, four against four is what this is gonna be. Two contacts. The players on the outside ha are only allowed to use one touch. Solo un contacto. For the outside players, that is.
inside two contacts. I've seen it many times before, but I, I'll tell you, I still find it fascinating to see just how good the passing game of Bayern youth and reserve team players is. That's never an issue for the uh, young guys who come out of the uh, youth academy. Niklas Dorsch, Fabian Benko on the outside. Here, Robin has allowed to two touches. They're not only one being outfield. Uh, Ochi, that's taking too long, Peter Hammond says. Again, there's immediate feedback at all times in every training session. The players know they're not only watched, but immediately scrutinized, analyzed. Robin with uh, Felix Götze, Bernard again, double pass Rafinha, very well played. And Robin, even in that situation, he finds the right solution. Beautifully played here. This is the kind of exercise that uh, if you play in every normal football club, it'll probably go out of hand completely. Here at Bayern, the players just have the automatic skill. We've been on air for nearly an hour now. Uh, we're going to uh, end this in a few uh, minutes uh, time. A couple more minutes, maybe three or four minutes. We'll stay on air for you to uh, give you uh, here a few more impressions from Munich Siebener Street. But uh, I think it's uh, safe to say you got an impression of what's going on here peter hammond hammond galland still working day and night for this club your is taking a couple of days of rest he's in the pressure seat of course for him it is a bit of a pressure situation more so for these guys but look at the involvement there of uh, peter hammond and this is uh, the story of his life in a nutshell in a training session uh, happy with what he's uh, seeing here saying and this is uh, what he's uh, referring to now this is just important when you in a normal football game in a competitive situation particularly going forward this is what you have to do one touch football quick reactions is you don't have time in uh, a professional football game and of course Ancelotti used to practice these uh, exercises a lot as uh, well but it's the kind of uh, exercise on a small confined space that allows the players not only to practice their passing game, their one-touch football, but what's more important, of course, is the players uh, start building an awareness for what the next step is. That's, of course, the biggest uh, difficulty, I suppose, and what makes a, a good player a great player. A, a good player can stop a pass like this. He can control it and then play a good pass to the next player. A great player doesn't need to do that because a great player knows where the next pass is going to be played before he actually makes contact. And these are the exact exercises that practice this. Again, we're going to stay on air for one or two more uh, minutes here. Suffice to say that uh, everyone who is in Munich is working hard. We expect to see Thomas Müller out on the pitch uh, um, later on. Franck Ribéry was already outside, as you saw, and as uh, announced, we had a little interview with him. So uh, stay tuned later on in the afternoon 
for a uh, an English um, news where we'll summarize the first uh, two or three days here without the national team players. So Ribéry working on his comeback, Müller working on his comeback, Bernat in training, Martinez, Vidal in training. Seems as if at least the first few days of this last uh, qualification, not qualification, but national team uh, break uh, uh, are being used very well by Bayern Munich's uh, coaching staff. I hope you enjoyed this uh, training session here in uh, Munich. We'll keep you uh, updated with what goes on. Little news uh, program later today and then on Thursday we're planning the next one. And then I think we're all going to enjoy a weekend without club football. Up to you to decide if you uh, want to uh, play, if you want to uh, watch some more, maybe with some Bayern players or with the Arturo Vidal lookalike in the background there. Arian Robin for the final pass. I'd like to say uh, thanks again for showing interest. Thanks for watching. Enjoy a club football free weekend and see you soon.